Airframe sheet metal structures. Oral questions. What is the major type of damage to aluminum structures caused by exposure to weather? Corrosion. Name several methods for forming sheet metal. Bending, folding, stretching, shrinking, bumping, crimping, and so forth. What are the dimensions of a properly formed rivet head? The shop head should be half the shank's diameter tall and one and a half shank diameter wide. Describe the markings found on the heads of A, B, D, A, D, and D, D rivets. A is a plain head, B is a raised cross, D is a raised dot, AD is a dimple, and DD has a raised double dash. What happens to the stem of a self-plugging friction lock rivet when the rivet is installed? The stem is pulled until it snaps off and the remaining projecting part is trimmed flush with the head. Name at least three types of self-plugging mechanical lock rivets. Cherry Max, Cherry Lock, Olympic Lock, or Huck Lock. What is the difference between the tools required to pull a Cherry Lock rivet and a Cherry Max rivet? Cherry Lock rivets require a tool for each different size and head shape, while one pulling tool will set any size Cherry Max rivet. Which of the five stresses is the most common cause of rivet failure? Shear. If a 2024 rivet must be replaced with a 2117 rivet, how do you determine the size to be used? For 5 30 seconds of an inch or smaller, Use the next larger size 2117 rivet, assuming that the edge distance and spacing meet the minimum requirements. Describe the process for determining the total length of a solid rivet for a particular installation. Add the grip length, aka the thickness of the materials being joined, plus one and a half times rivet diameter. This is the formula you would have learned in class. One and a half times diameter plus grip times 16 will equal the length in sixteenths. We multiply by 16 to get to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. What minimum edge distance and spacing should be used for a single row of protruding head rivets? Not less than two rivet diameters from the edge and not less than three rivet diameters apart. How can a mechanic determine whether the countersink for a flush rivet should be dimpled or drilled? by the thickness of the top sheet. Thin sheets are dimpled while thick sheets may be countersunk. What action is taken to prevent cracks from forming while dimpling magnesium or some hard sheets metals? Hot dimpling equipment can be used. It preheats and softens the metal before the dimpling operation occurs. What type of damage can occur when using a rivet set that does not properly fit the rivet?
If the radius of the set is too small, the rivet head may be damaged. And if it is oversized, the radius may cause damage to the metal sheet. Why is it important to use the proper size and weight bucking bar when performing sheet metal riveting? If a bucking bar is too large or heavy, it can be hard to control and cause damage to the surrounding structure. A bucking bar that is too light will not properly upset or set the rivet before it work hardens. What procedures should be followed to properly remove a solid shank rivet? Center punch the manufactured head. Drill just to the base of the rivet head with the same size or one size smaller drill bit. Once drilled, use a pin punch to tip off the rivet head and drive the remaining shank out of the hole, all the while supporting your surrounding metal. What are the two special calculations that must be made when bending sheet metal? Bend allowance and setback. What factors must be considered in order to determine setback? The thickness of the metal and the bend radius. What is done to a corner where two bends intersect to prevent cracking? Relief holes are drilled into the corners. What are the two reasons for installing a lightning hole in the sheet metal wing rib? Lightning holes reduce the weight and increase the stiffness of the metal. Describe a joggle and explain its function. A joggle is an offset formed at an intersection of two or more sheets of metal to allow the multiple sheets to be stacked flat against each other. When repairing an all-metal aircraft, how do you determine what metals should be used? Always use metal of the same type and thickness as the original structure.